Now at 5 a.m., this is WKYT This Morning. Some people are not happy about Donald Trump's presidential win on election night. That's why it has been sparking protests around the country. We'll have the latest on those ahead. Also ahead on WKYT, the government is helping the Commonwealth fight a wildfire in eastern Kentucky. How money from FEMA will be used in Breathitt County. And he says he's humble that he received so many votes. We'll find out how a 19-year-old earned a seat on London City Council. That in your forecast coming up. This is WKYT This Morning. Kentucky Morning Star right here on WKYT. It's so good to have you with us. I'm Andrea Walker. Good morning. I'm Bill Bryant. And we're glad you're here on Thursday, November 10th, a morning where we have frost. You might have a little work to do out there with the windshield That's scraper. That's right. You may want to give yourself a couple extra minutes this morning, my friends. Let's head on over to meteorologist Micah Harris for an early look at the forecast. Yeah, we're seeing the 30s outside, and absolutely, there's no doubt about it, you will have frost on those windshields. And, and once you scrape that off, it might last, you know, take you another two or three minutes. So it might take you a, f uh, a few extra minutes early this morning to get out and about. So just keep that in mind as you're walking out the door this morning. 32 degrees right now in Mount Sterling. 32 down in Williamsburg, down south. 60 by the afternoon, though. We rise very rapidly. We'll get the winds out of the south. That'll help us out. And so we'll really pump those temperatures later on today. However, you get towards your weekend and it's going to be totally different. Another cold shot of air. We're going to go over when that front moves on through coming up. Okay, see you in a bit. Thank you. President elect Donald Trump and his wife Melania will travel to Washington today to meet with President Obama and First Lady Michelle. Uh, it comes as Trump's presidential win is sparking some angry protests around the country. Reed Binion has the story. Demonstrators in Oakland, California, protesting into the night Wednesday against the election victory that shocked the world. Similar protests took place in cities across the nation, from Philadelphia to Oregon and down through the West Coast to Los Angeles. Some demonstrators there setting fire to a Donald Trump effigy, others blocking the highway. In New York, as many as 5,000 people gathered outside Trump Tower, while in the nation's capital, anti-Trump chants echoed through the streets. The Trump. A similar outcry heard in Chicago. Not my president, not today. Not my president, not today. Some even calling on Clinton to challenge the election results. I need you. Chicago needs you. We all need you. This country needs you. Clinton herself sending a very different message as she conceded. Donald Trump is going to be our president. We owe him an open mind and the chance to lead. The rage that played out on the streets Wednesday, a stark contrast to the conciliatory tone set by President Obama as he spoke following Trump's victory. We are now all rooting for his success in uniting and leading the country. Obama now set to follow those words with action, inviting Trump to meet with him at the White House Thursday. I'm Reed Binion reporting. And that uh, meeting, by the way, will be uh, this morning. And students in Kentucky also held some protests over Trump's presidential election win. One protest ended in a few arrests. Our Michelle Chamberlain is at the WKYT Alert Desk this morning with the details. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. And these campuses are peaceful this morning, but last night three students were arrested at Western Kentucky University after an anti Trump demonstration. Yet here we are in 2016, electing a president into office who just gives a voice to those people who constantly terrorize people like me. Like for me, I'm a gay woman, and I can't like tell you that I am not afraid to leave my house after what has happened. I hear all kinds of rude comments in the streets. You know, people who feel like it's okay now. Trump presidency, but there were also students at the Western protests to back up Trump. Now, here in Lexington, dozens of students rallied together on UK's campus. It was more of a peaceful crowd outside the Patterson office tower. This gathering was more of a candlelight vigil. Some of the students we spoke to last night were angry and scared that Trump won the election, but they are ready to move forward. And also to reflect on how we move forward and how do we organize and what do we need to do to make sure that we still feel comfortable on this campus and make sure that our voice is heard. Now, some of the students tell us they just want their voices to be heard. And Bill and Andrea, it's important to remember that Trump did win Kentucky easily. The only two Kentucky counties Hillary Clinton won were Fayette and Jefferson counties. Guys? All right. Thank you very much, Michelle. In other news, a crime alert has been issued in a Lexington neighborhood this morning. Police say they're investigating a home invasion and an attempted burglary in the Pinnacle neighborhood. That's near Tates Creek Road and Man of War. WKYT's Lauren Miner joining us there live this morning with the details. Good morning, Lauren. 
Good morning. Well, police were called twice here yesterday evening within an hour in the Pinnacle neighborhood for an attempted home invasion and a home invasion. Police say it was around 10:30. There was an attempted home invasion on Clavis Court. The person who was allegedly trying to get in may have been spooked by the homeowner and ran away. About 30 minutes later, thieves made it into a home here on Pinnacle Court. The couple who lives in the home says they were upstairs when they heard a noise. The man says he walked to the top of the stairs and saw someone walking towards him. He then yelled and the person went running out a door in the garage. The homeowner says he saw five men running away wearing hooded sweatshirts. The couple says the thieves stole a large flat screen television, several electronics, a set of car keys, and a wallet. Now, police have not released a description of the suspects. The neighborhood HOA president has said there will be an increase in officers patrolling the neighborhood. And I actually just saw here. Here on Pinnacle Court, an officer drive by, I would say about 10, 15 minutes ago. So those officers are out here patrolling. Now, I was also sent out here just a few weeks ago to cover a few car break ins. And I don't believe that is far from these streets where the home invasions took place. For now, reporting live in Lexington, Lauren Miner, WKYT. Lauren, thank you. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office is now investigating a death after a missing man was found dead. Police issued a golden alert for Rodney Carter. They say the 45 year old disappeared from his home on Poplar Hollow Road early Monday morning. Deputies say Carter was found last night not far from his home. Investigators say an autopsy has been scheduled to determine a cause of death. Another Tates Creek High School student is charged after police say he brought a gun to campus. The school's principal says a Lexington police officer spotted the student in a neighborhood and brought him to school. School officials say they saw the teen trying to hide the gun. They say it was not loaded. Investigators say the student claimed he had the gun because of problems at home. He's been charged with possession of a weapon on school property. This is the second time in the last week a gun has been found at Tates Creek High School. University of Kentucky campus police investigating a sexual assault report on campus. They say two female students were assaulted in a residence hall room. UK police have since issued a crime bulletin. They say the suspect is a male student the victims both know. Students we talked with on campus say it is a frightening crime. I will make sure that whoever I surround myself with, I can trust them and I feel like there's nothing I have to second guess about them. UK police say the assaults happened Monday night, but they got the report yesterday and then issued the crime bulletin. The Commonwealth is getting some federal help for a wildfire in eastern Kentucky. The one that's been going on mm -hmm. about a week. FEMA says it will reimburse costs to Kentucky for fighting the Eagle's Nest Fire in Breathitt County. The money can be used for labor, equipment, and supplies needed to fight that fire. The fire again has been burning for a little more than a week. Investigators say it burned more than 2,000 acres. They say some of that land is privately owned, but some of it is owned by the state. And some people in southeastern Kentucky could be having a few health problems because of those wildfires. The Kentucky Department of Public Health has issued a smoke inhalation advisory in Laurel, Whitney, Rock, Whitley, Rockcastle, and others nearby. Health leaders say people with respiratory disorders, asthma, COPD, and emphysema are at higher risk for problems. Police in Letcher County have charged a man who they say is responsible for starting some wildfires. Police arrested Johnny Mullins after they say he admitted to starting a fire near a home. Officials say they're investigating several other fires that could lead back to Mullins. He is charged with second degree arson. Time is 5.08 on WKYT. Here's an impressive young man. We love this one. <laughs> London City Council is looking a little bit younger for its next term. That's right. A 19 year old received the most votes of all city council candidates. Noah White says he didn't expect to win a seat, but he says he worked hard for the position and knocked on nearly every door in London's city limits. He also made his own campaign ads to post on Facebook, but White says he doesn't want to be a politician. I want to be a public servant. I think there's a big difference between being a politician and being a public servant. White says he's humbled by the number of votes he earned. He tells us he's ready to go to work. His two year term will start in January. All right. That's so inspiring, <laughs> isn't it? Well, it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, Hard you know, work pays off. Yeah, we'll see if he uh, goes on in politics or mm -hmm. if uh, you know he just chooses to serve his community. It's really, yeah. a, really good thing to step up young. WKYT this morning just getting started here on your Thursday. Still ahead on WKYT, Apple is doing something it hasn't done in nearly a decade. Find out what that means for you in about 10 minutes. Also ahead on WKYT, Donald Trump had his cake and ate it too. We'll check out his victory cake and 
Why it's making waves online. It's coming up after Micah's forecast. 33 right now in Laurel County, and we're 32 in Mount Sterling. It's a cold start to the day. We're going to talk about that weekend cold front where it gets actually colder. I'll have that coming up next. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. We have that frost advisory out there for virtually everybody. Once again, the northern zones of Kentucky, you guys aren't in it. This is another National Weather Service office. Remember, we don't put these out. National Weather Service offices do. We have three that cover the region, and two of them are on board. The other one into Ohio is not on board for you guys in northern Kentucky, but trust me on this just because you're not in the blue shaded area, just because you're not under an advisory, Trust me, you are seeing frost this morning. I don't know why they don't put it out, but it's 34 degrees right now in Maysville. It's 33 in Covington. We're almost freezing in many spots up toward the north, so there's no doubt about it. There is frost out there. 37 degrees there in Lexington. We're 33 in London and Jackson coming in in the mid-30s. By the afternoon, we're roughly 60 degrees there in the forecast, mostly sunny skies. Go off through your night and into tomorrow morning. Not as cold, but it's still pretty chilly. There could be some patchy frost. Uh, here and there tomorrow morning, but it is widespread this morning. Virtually everybody seeing it this morning after a, a afternoon right there, around 60 degrees. Okay, the weekend freeze that we've been talking about. There's a big front on Friday night into Saturday. More than likely when you're out at these high school football games, which will be chilly, will be there in the uh, lower 50s. Uh, once you're there, you'll start to feel those winds increasing. That's the front pushing on through. So the front actually pushed through during the nighttime hours on Friday. Off into your Saturday. Saturday is when you feel the brunt of it. The latest first fall freeze is actually November 27th, back in 1902. It's been over 100 years. And, and you know what? We'll actually, I, I do believe we'll actually hit it this weekend. But nonetheless, we're creeping up on a record of the latest first fall freeze. So it's been extremely warm. We all know that. And, and that just shows you how warm it's been. Saturday's high, upper 40s to lower 50s. But Sunday's low, we're in the upper 20s to lower 30s. So Sunday is going to be your coldest morning. Nonetheless, Saturday will be pretty chilly too, but Sunday is the coldest morning. Saturday is the coldest day. Getting out and about, trust me on this, Saturday is going to be extremely chilly. We're there at 48 degrees for a high. 56 there on Sunday, and it looks like we're going to be looking at uh, that morning freeze once again there on Sunday morning, and also the possibility there on Saturday morning. If you're planning on going out and about, know this, you remember yesterday. It's pretty easy to remember. It's just 24 hours ago. <laughs> uh, you just need to throw on a coat because that's the way it's going to feel this weekend. This weekend, actually, you'll get a little sunshine, so it might make it look, feel a little bit better at 48. But yesterday, we finished off upper 40s, lower mm -hmm. 50s. We'll do it again once again this weekend. All right. A little warmer during the daytime hours. That's right. <laughs> Micah, thank you. Our time is 515. And Donald Trump served up quite the cake at his election night party. You could even say it was huge. Uh, the cake also looked <laughs> somewhat like the Donald. The victory cake was delivered to Trump Tower, complete with a Secret Service escort. And as you can see, the cake is a life-size bust of the now president-elect. The cake caused a stir on social media. Many suggested the bust looks a bit sad and not really resembles Trump. Uh, the cake's creator says that was not her aim. Instead, she tried to capture his naturally serious face. It gives new meaning to the phrase, you are what you eat, I guess, right? A valiant <laughs> effort, but I have to agree. It doesn't look that much like Quite it. Like no offense. <laughs> so, I couldn't do anything close to uh, it. So exactly. I'm, kudos. I'm, I'm not one to criticize uh, cake making it. Right. <laughs> uh, okay, keep it here on WKYT 516 on your Thursday morning. When we come back, we'll take a look at your money. Good morning. The time is 519 Thursday on WKYT. Welcome aboard on a very frosty chilly. morning out there. It's chilly. Very chilly. Well, President-elect uh, President Trump's win had a big impact on the financial world, and we're going to see how Wall Street now rallied. And if you're planning on traveling this holiday season, some airports will be busier than others. Marley Hall has the latest on your money. Wall Street rallied following Donald Trump's upset victory over Hillary Clinton in the presidential election. Stock futures had plunged overnight as results came in, but investors appeared to be calmed by Trump's conciliatory victory speech. Some analysts also say Trump's victory means the Federal Reserve is unlikely to raise interest rates in December. 
Early losses gave way to big gains before the closing bell. The Dow rose 256 points within sight of a record. The Nasdaq added 57. For the first time in nearly a decade, Apple is selling refurbished iPhones. The tech giant already offers pre-owned Macs and iPods. A refurbished iPhone 6S from Apple will set customers back $449 to start. Orbits.com has compiled a list of busiest airports this holiday season. The travel site predicts airports in Chicago, Atlanta, and L.A. will experience the most congestion and longest lines. According to Orbits, 73% of Americans plan to travel for either Thanksgiving or Christmas. That's your Money Watch. For more, log on to CBSMoneyWatch.com. In New York, I'm Marley Hall. And if you're planning on traveling, there's one thing that everybody has to do, and that's pack up, and we have some tips to make that a little bit easier this morning. The folks at SmarterTravel.com suggest that if it's a short trip to take three tops and three bottoms that are practical, comfortable, and can be mixed and matched, you can always do a load of laundry on the road or even hand wash some items. And remember, hotels offer plenty of free toiletries to help cut back on what you need to pack. I always take home the free toiletries. <laughs> I bring my own so I can take home the free ones. <laughs> All right. Not, not the towels, do you? Not Is the it? towels. Okay. I know where to Good. cut the line, okay. draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There you go. Uh, 522 on WKYT this morning. Great to have you with us here on this Thursday. The weekend will soon be here, and more news is on the way. Sports is on the way next. The basketball Wildcats open the season tomorrow night, and the Cats start with a gauntlet. Three games in five days. Also, two of Lexington's best basketballers and the state's best signed D1 scholarships yesterday. I'll tell you who coming up next. We are at 36 right now in Moorhead. I'm actually getting some pictures there on Twitter, Mike Harris WX, uh, of you guys sending in some shots of some frost on the cars, on some bridges as well. Uh, maybe even some freezing fog over toward eastern Kentucky. You got to be watching out for that. 37 right now in Jackson, 32 in Frankfurt. So frosty starts of the morning. There are some freezing spots too. By the afternoon, we're right around 60 degrees, mostly sunny skies. Actually, it looks and feels pretty nice later on this afternoon. Let's check out sports, see what's going on. Kentucky opens the basketball season tomorrow night in Rupp Arena against Stephen F. Austin. It'll be the first of three games in five days. The Cats have had an easy time in their two exhibition matchups. Now things get serious, and there are items John Calipari wants to see. This team's got to post the ball. We've got to be a better defensive team. That's what we're going to be, like everybody. We still don't trust each other because we're so young. Um, that you got to play team defense. You can't just play your man, even though you got to guard your guy. And then I think the other thing is I, I like the fact we share the ball. You know, for two games, we've had 30 assists. And again, I, I understand they're exhibition games. Dunbar guard Tavion Hollingsworth, a top candidate for Mr. Basketball, signing yesterday with the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Hollingsworth drawing some interest from Kentucky. UK wanted him to hold off until the spring signing period. But Hollingsworth did not want to wait it out. He'll play for new coach Rick Stansberry, who has brought in some top-notch recruits. You know, we should be good with all the recruits we have, the top 100 in the nation. You know me, I'm not ranked, but I'll be up there with them, and I'll be ready to play with them. They've got some great bigs coming in next year. Uh, they have Justin Johnson back still for one more year, and I think Tavion fits into that really well. They need a dynamic guard that can really score. Also signing yesterday was Luke Johnson of Lexington Catholic, the first team All-City and All-Stater is headed to Loyola in Maryland to play for Tubby Smith's son, Gigi. Johnson leading the Knights last season in eight offensive categories. Johnson averaged 23 points a game. I think the best part of my game is to dish out and pass and like get others involved in the game. And I think, especially going to the college level with people being better than they are in high school, I think I can make everybody even better in college. And both of those guys will be a lot better in college, and they're pretty darn good now. That's a look at sports. Have a great day.